In the upcoming unit, what we are going to focus on are amines. In this video, we're going to introduce the amine functional group, and we're going to talk about how we go about classifying amines, specifically as primary, secondary, or tertiary amines. So first things first, let's make sure we're all clear on the definition of what an amine functional group is. When we refer to an amine, we're referring to a nitrogen-containing compound. And specifically, we are referring to a nitrogen-containing compound that will have three covalent bonds, and that can be three covalent bonds to three different atoms, or it could also be three covalent bonds in total by having two bonds to the same atom over here, and then a bond to another atom. And then the nitrogen will also have a lone pair of electrons on it so that it has a complete octet. So we're looking at these nitrogen containing compounds as amines. What amines are not is they will not be a scenario where you have a nitrogen atom that is directly connected to a carbonyl group. That instead will be referred to as an amide group. So in the case of a scenario where you have a nitrogen atom directly connected to a carbonyl, this situation, this group, is referred to as an amide group. A-M-I-D-E, and I'm putting the D in capitals there for emphasis. So if you see a carbonyl directly connected to a nitrogen, classify that as an amide, not an amine. In other scenarios where you see a nitrogen and it is not directly connected to a carbonyl, in those cases, that nitrogen is part of an amine group. So when we talk about amines, these are a very broad group of compounds that have a wide variety of really interesting biological functions. To give you a few examples of those different biological functions that these molecules can possess, we take a look at the following. The compound in the upper left corner of your screen is known as serotonin. Serotonin is a common neurotransmitter, and in fact, the majority of neurotransmitters found within the body are molecules that have one or more amine functional groups. And in the case of serotonin, we can take a look at this and recognize there's actually not just one, but two amine functional groups within this molecule. So let's take a closer look and circle those. We have an amine group here, and we also have an amine group down here as well, because in both cases, we have a nitrogen atom that is not directly connected to a carbonyl group. And hence, each of these are referred to as amine functional groups. Additionally, as we continue looking at different cases where we'll run into amine groups, another interesting example is the case of the molecule that I'm about to show you, which is trimethylamine. Now, in the case of trimethylamine, this is a really small molecule that literally can make a big stink. When fish decompose, what happens is that the amino acids that are present within the fish will decompose and that decomposition process ends up releasing this molecule, trimethylamine, which has a very strong stinky odor and results in much of what we smell when we smell decaying fish, as disgusting as that sounds. So the amine group in this, that nitrogen atom, which is directly connected to those three methyl groups. So other examples, and there are lots and lots of examples we could look at of amine groups that are prominent in biological systems, is we could also take a look at a molecule called diphenylhydramine, or more commonly, Benadryl. And the structure of Benadryl looks like so. So Benadryl is, of course, the trade name of a very common antihistamine, anti-allergy medicine. In addition to amine groups, such as the amine group in Benadryl here, which I'm circling, being common in legal drugs, amine groups are also really common in illegal drugs as well. For example, we'll take a look at the structure of heroin. Now in the structure of this molecule, we can find our amine group by taking a look down here, kind of at the lower left, lower right corner of this molecule. And keep in mind that the bonds we see that I'm highlighting here with my laser pointer that are the bold bonds, those bold bonds indicate that this is pointed outward toward you from the molecule. So the lines are behind this boldness that you see here. By making it bold, that indicates that those bonds are coming toward you. To illustrate that we have here in the structure of heroin, 
multiple rings that are superposed on one and one of those rings is this ring that I'm highlighting here outlined with my laser pointer which has a grand total of starting with a nitrogen one two three four five six atoms to make this ring system that I am highlighting here and going around and around that is superposed over the other rings that are present here such as this six carbon ring right here another six carbon ring here and so we have those bonds there in bold to highlight, to make it a little bit easier to see the connections between the atoms of this illegal drug. So with these different examples of commonly known amines, we have a variety of different functions that these serve biologically. So taking a look at these amines, these give us examples that we can use as ways to classify amines within any organic molecule. So when we classify amines, we will classify amines as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here in the upper right. We're going to classify any amine functional group as primary, which primary means that there's just one bond between carbon and nitrogen. So that nitrogen atom of the molecule has just one carbon directly connected to it. On the other hand, a secondary amine is going to refer to a nitrogen atom that has two carbons directly connected to it, and therefore one hydrogen to satisfy the octet rule. A tertiary carbon, or tertiary amine rather, is going to have three carbon atoms directly connected to it, and hence no hydrogen atoms, because keep in mind that in all of these cases, the nitrogen will always have a lone pair of electrons to make that amine functional group. So primary, secondary, and tertiary, what we are looking for to define these is how many direct linkages are there between the carbon, at the nitrogen atom and carbon atoms that are connected there. So in the case of these molecules, we can take a look and use these as examples for classifying amines as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So let's take a look at that for serotonin. If we look at the structure of serotonin, we have the amine group that we circled up here. We recognize that this nitrogen is directly connected to only one other atom, one carbon atom. So therefore, we would describe this as a primary amine. On the other hand, the other nitrogen atom in serotonin has two direct links to carbon atoms. And so therefore, we refer to that as instead a secondary amine. In the structure of Benadryl on your lower left hand corner, we have a nitrogen atom that has three direct bonds to carbons because remember that these lines indicate there's a methyl group at the end of each of those lines. And so therefore, there's a total of three direct bonds to carbon and therefore we call this a tertiary amine. Trimethylamine in the upper right corner is the same sort of scenario. It has three direct bonds to carbon, and so we call it a tertiary amine. And then we come down to our structure of heroin at the lower right corner. That nitrogen has three direct bonds to carbon because of the methyl group, and then two bonds to the carbon atoms of the ring. And so that makes this qualify as a tertiary amine as well. So this is a common way to go about classifying amine functional groups. And this information is important because whether an amine is primary, secondary, or tertiary is going to have implications in terms of the types of reactions that the molecule will undergo. And in the upcoming videos, what we are going to do is transition from just classifying amines to actually going about determining the systematic names of particular amine structures. Now granted, in that nomenclature scheme, we won't get into any molecules that are quite as complicated in terms of the number of functional groups as heroin, benadryl, or serotonin, but we will look at a variety of molecules that have amine functional groups and learn how to determine the IUPAC names for those molecules.